Hi, this is Dio. This is the eighth lecture of the Dio Navi Surgical Manual Series, Guide Design Process and Basic Concepts. Let's start. There are three objectives that we need to learn from this lecture. First, after studying this chapter, you will be able to describe the Dio Navi Guide Design Process. Second, you will learn three key points of the guide design. And last, you will be able to know what to consider in designing the guide by looking at the case studies. First, before learning the Dionavi design process, I will describe the entire Dionavi workflow. Dionavi process starts from image merging, implant planning, and guide design through 3Shape Implant Studio software. The important thing here is the third process, confirm planning. Only after the surgeon has checked and approved the implant planning provided by Dio, it can be proceeded to designing and producing the guide. On the next page, let me show you a video of the process from when the order is received for the guide surgery to process merging, implant planning, and guide design. The implant planning report provided to the surgeon consists of four image sections, and the meaning of each image is as follows. Section A is a scan view. In other words, you need to check the correlation of the prosthesis. B is the panoramic view, C is the buccolingual view, and D is the mesial distal view. The final section E shows information about the diameter and length of the fixture that's going to be placed. You can see this report by accessing the Dionabi website. If you cannot access the Dionabi website, the Dionabi center in your area will send you an email. Let me explain to you how to check and approve the implant planning data provided by Dio. If you have sent an order sheet, through the Dionabi website. You can also check the implant planning data on the same site. If you click the fifth button, waiting for planning approval in the order status, the waiting approval list will be shown below. Detailed information about each case can be found in View Details button. You will see a screen like this when you click on the View Details button. When you click on the implant planning screen, it enters full screen mode so you can easily check the contents. And just below, you can write a comment you want to pass to Dio or to the dental technicians. After that, you can use two functions. The confirm button is finalizing this case by approving it. Next to it is the modification request button. Use this when you want to modify the implant planning data provided by Dio. In any case, Dio needs the final approval of the surgeon to start the production and delivery of the Dio Navi guide. In this slide, we will learn about the guide design. 
Here are three key points to know when designing the guides. First, the importance of palatal scans in the maxilla. Second, how to design a guide reinforcement bar. And third, the need for full arch scanning. If the palatal side is not sufficiently scanned during maxillary scanning, the guide will be designed to be placed on the tooth only. In this case, the guide may not be able to be placed flat on the oral cavity and may cause drilling angle deviation during the surgery. What you see on this slide is a guide that has been fabricated after the palatal area has been fully scanned. The guide that was designed with enough palatal area is more stable and balanced when placed on the oral cavity. Therefore, when you design the surgical guide for upper edentulous or multiple implant cases, it is important to scan enough of the palatal side. The second topic is the design concept of the guide reinforcement bar. In the free end case, since there are no teeth to support the guide from the rear, there is a high possibility of movement. Therefore, in this case, the surgeon should fix the guide with hands or tools so that the guide does not tilt while drilling. In addition to these fixing methods, a guide reinforcement bar is attached to the guide to improve the stability of the guide. If you look at the picture on the left, a reinforcement bar has been added so that one end is on the implant placement location and the other end is on the opposite side. On the right picture, this is a guide for placing three implants, 45, 46, and 47. A reinforcement bar was also added so that one end is on the implant placement location and the other on the opposite side. Another case of adding a reinforcement bar. This is a guide for placing implants in 16 and 17. The drawing on the left is the draft design before adding the reinforcement bar, and the right is the finished product. In the free end cases or multiple implant placement cases, the full arch must be accurately scanned, as well as adding reinforcement bars for stable and accurate guide surgery. This is a case scanned using a marker. It is not a free end case, but it is a case that produces an accurate guide by scanning the full arch. If the scanning area is insufficient like this case, precise guide design is difficult. The reinforcement bar was not designed properly. As a result, guide tilting may occur from the rear when the guide is seated. Due to the tilting, the implant may be placed less deeply than planned, and causing the prosthesis to float. There are four ways to prevent this problem. First, you will learn how to fix the guide when performing a freehand case through this video. Second, add one more reinforcement bar connected to the first reinforcement bar and the free end part. This additional bar in the lateral direction prevents the bending of the guide and tilting. The third is the surgical tip. The implant is placed in the relatively flat or stable part of the bone and the guide fix pin is fastened on it. This method improves the bonding force between the guide and the teeth thereby reducing the tilting of the guide in the free end case. Lastly, there is a method of submerging the fixtures 0.5 mm to 1 mm deeper than the original plant. The UF2 fixture has a pitch spacing of 0.85 to 0.9 mm for each thread. So you can submerge to the desired depth simply by turning two-thirds or more. 
Also, considering that there are three hex sides of the DNA implant connector, the submerged depth can be adjusted by turning two sides or just one more turn. This concludes the lecture on design and application of the DNA guide. I wish you all success in DNA guide surgery. Thank you. This was Theo.